Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, viewers. You are now participating in the cultural event of the Blaze Ball News Network Season 8 Recap Stream. I am your host, Kimberly Dauber, a Blaze Ball in the Sky with a microphone. Thank you all for joining us. Today, we are going to go over everything you need to know about what happened in Season 8 of Blaze Ball. But first, let's introduce our panelists. Benson? Please introduce yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Benson. Firewall? Thank you, Firewall. Now to Ace. All right, thanks, Ace. And then finally, Vlad. Whoa, hey. <laughs> Let's do introductions again. Our first technical difficulty of the day. This is such an exciting stream. Let's introduce ourselves. Benson, go right ahead. Uh, hey, hey, everyone. Um, I'm I'm Benson Newton. Uh, a lot of people call me Nutty, but I'm not that much into the nickname. It's just from from high school. You know how it is uh, from college. Uh, but my boss keeps bringing it up. So, you know, that's what people know me as. Uh, I use he him pronouns. And yeah, I, I'm the intern in chief for the Blaseball News Network. All right. Thanks, Benson. Over to you, Firewall. Yeah, I'm Firewall Andrews. I am the lead writer at Flangraphs, and I get paid in peanuts, literally, which is an upgrade from a lot of people in media, I guess. So I'm happy to be here. Do I get more peanuts for this stream? We'll talk no, about No, you do Don't not, Firewall, but thanks for coming anyway. Ace Analyst? Hey, everyone. I am Ace Analyst. I use he, him pronouns, and I am coming to you live from the abandoned warehouse where the Blazeball Prospectus offices are located. And at Blazeball Prospectus, I am the lead writer slash intern. All right. Thank you, Ace. And finally, we have Vlad. Hey, everybody. I'm Vlad from Eurosport. I use he, him pronouns as well. I've been covering Blazeball for Eurosport for a long time. Before that, I covered football but it wasn't bloody enough for me not that it matters in any way my top knot is tied i've got a bloody mary over here and i'm really excited to join my colleagues all right thank you very much vlad and our chat today is being moderated by the one the only for scythia hell tiger thank you very much for scythia for helping us out with this Today on the show, first off, we're going to recap splorts that happened during Season 8. So let's dive right on into it. Panelists, what should our viewers know? Well, geez, uh, I think one of the most important things that happened right at the beginning of the season. Oh, apparently, uh, the Seattle uh, Garages announced that Jalen Hot Dog Fingers figured out how to refinance their debt. And pretty soon after that, we figured out that well, instead of making people unstable, they make people flicker. And, uh, well, as soon as that started happening, people started getting caught up in feedback frenzies all over the league. And, uh, Jalen just keeps causing problems. It's worth noting that um, some of these transactions were a little suboptimal and, and confusing. Here at Flangraphs, we really dig into the numbers, and, and we're not quite sure why... You know, for instance, a team might trade Nolan Estofia Patterson for Lang Richardson. We're not exactly sure, but uh, ultimately what it came down to was there was a lot of movement between teams, even into the playoffs, Summers Pony and Farrell Seagull swapping teams between uh, the garages and the pies. It's just been a very crazy season in terms of movement from, from team to team, and I don't think that's going to end anytime soon. You're completely right about that, Firewall. On another related note, the monitor who followed Jalen Hot Dog Fingers from the trench decided to open up the hall because they were so hungry for peanuts that they wanted us to give them to the monitor. And so the monitor chose to, to do this by opening up a hall of incinerated players, and we 
are allowed to give peanuts to these incinerated players. It's it's kind of confusing what this is going to do, but we got a slider for it, so there are a lot of peanuts going to these players. Yeah, one thing I would uh, I would like to uh, re- remind our viewers is that uh, you know you remember the sacrifice going through uh, at the the end of last season, and people just didn't know what was going to happen. And uh, I think uh, the appearance of pitching machine was uh, was really unexpected and uh, interesting. Interesting, especially for people who are big into betting. What are your thoughts? Yeah, the the instance of the pitching machine was very interesting, especially learning that it liked to drink blood. It was a little concerning. I I was kind of nervous every time I had to cover a tacos game, but that pitching machine got really good the more blood it drank, and it was kind of scary to watch. It, it, It seemed to be run on blood hydraulics or something. It was really gross, but that said, that pitching machine was busy. No pitcher has ever thrown as many innings in a season as Pitching Machine, who threw 585 innings. So it's an impressive season for just one machine, but also kind of scary that it drinks blood and kind of came out of nowhere. I would like to call out a reaction to the Pitching Machine from the chat. Uh, Dovidos says slurp. Any response? Honestly, it's just kind of, oh, no. A lot of people drink blood. Sorry, Cap. Oh, jeez. Oh, uh, honestly, I I'm happy that I don't really go out and cover the games. I'm I'm a bit squeamish for all this, all this blood drain and blood sipping stuff that seems to go around ever since what season season six was it? Season six was a stressful one for me. I, I hid out in the offices. Ugh. But you know, I I'm a, I'm a really big fan of of the the pitching machine it was really nice to see you know a good young upstart like a pitching machine be a representative for machines everywhere and get out there and really show the league what for i mean when they when they wheeled it out there it somehow was better than the average taco pitcher to begin with and then it just kept getting better and better as the season progressed man it was it was great it was great to see and then they put it in a shell yeah well how's that was- I was going to leave the sad news for later, but, y- you know. It is what it is. Maybe some birds will come along next season, but we'll get to that uh, Get the, get to that in a sec. What do you think about the standings at the end of this season? I mean, the Crabs were first. That's not a surprise. What else was surprising for you? Well, one thing that definitely surprised me was the wild low surging, and they they got three teams into the playoffs. Last season, in in Season 7, no teams from the wild low made the playoffs at all, and they were all pretty subpar. So to see them be able to rebound from from enhanced party time and be able to catapult the majority of their division into the playoffs was a really interesting sight. Yeah, I have to agree there. I mean, unfortunately, I picked the Hellmouth Sunbeams to win the championship, and they did not. But I'll still take some credit that they finished with, you know, the fifth best record in place ball after being, you know, outside the playoffs for so long. Um, the wild low was definitely interesting, but but I was also interested in the fall of the wild high that kind of went along with that, seeing, you know, perennial contenders like the firefighters, jazz hands, lovers, and millennials all finish it you know, basically one game over 500 or lower is is just really kind of surprising and strange. And and I think that going into the next season after the siesta, it will be interesting to see if those teams can bounce back because there's a lot of superstars on those teams, but they're just getting sort of crowded out by the crabs. I think uh, the, the emergence of the wild high, I mean, the wild low this season really showed us the power of enhanced party time. I know a lot of fans voted for that. Um, and got to see it passed, hoping that it would really boost some of these uh, less performing teams into the stratosphere. And especially especially when it came to teams like the Sunbeams and the Spies, which were definitely on the bubble, but just weak enough in skill to get beat up by the likes of the Millennials, Firefighters, Jazz Hands, and so on. It's pretty great to, well, you know, see all these teams get to come up because they're having so much fun learning about baseball while partying. 
panelists, before we cut to our first break, can we get your take on the playoffs that are currently ongoing? Yeah, I mean, obviously right now we're watching the semifinals and it's looking like the Crabs are about to take a commanding lead. And, and I think that's what we all expected, you know, coming into all the playoffs every year for the past few years. The Crabs are the favorites. It will be very interesting, though, to see with two teams coming out of the mild league who have the potential to ascend uh, to see if that inspires them when they reach the final. I think that the Pies are a better team, um, but the Tigers are currently ahead as we're recording. So it will be interesting to see which team comes out and, and makes an impact because ascending baseball might be a very interesting storyline to follow. And we could see it if one of these teams wins. Uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really enjoying watching the the semifinals right now. I think, yeah, I think we all knew unless something crazy happens, like, you know, uh, them getting upset in the semifinals last season. I think we were all knew it was going to be the crabs versus someone in this postseason. Um, especially without some of the historically very strong teams in, in the postseason to contest them. Uh, as much as I would love the Spies to win, you know, they're at negative one versus the Crabs four. I think it's not going to go anywhere in their favor. However, Tigers and Pies tied up. Looking pretty interesting there at the bottom of the fourth. And I will say, to your point, Benson, we have seen the Crabs go down before. So it could happen that the Tigers or the Pies, if they get on a good run, could become internet league champions one more once more and that would mean ascension and we really don't know what that means so that's always a very exciting prospect what are the chances of ascension in this uh sorry uh sorry vlad what are the chances of ascension in this round of in this season of baseball well i think the odds are pretty good um if you ask me either the tigers or the pies can put up a good fight with the crabs, but uh, as a European pundit, you know, I'm just curious to to know what's going to happen to the country of Croatia now uh, if the crabs win again. So I think it's going to be the crabs, and there will be three uh, ascension-prone teams after the siesta. I think if uh, if it weren't for Jessica Telephone just getting uh, shelled once again right before the beginning of the season, I think we'd have a really good chance of seeing the Pies ascend. They have a really well-rounded team, especially with uh, their pitcher, Elvis Figu- Figueroa. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, you know, a great four-and-a-half-star pitcher on the mound, you know, sometime in the playoffs. But Hades Tigers are incredibly well-rounded. They don't have a superstar in a shell. I think if the Tigers can make it past the Pies here, they have a very good chance of still beating the Crabs in the finals in ascending. All right, we're about out of time for our sport segment, but if any of you would like to wrap us up, please go right ahead. Any final thoughts? Yeah, I think that the main thing that, that folks should keep an eye on here as we head towards the finals that is likely the Crabs versus the Tigers or Pies is to keep an eye on the pitching. And as Benson mentioned, Dunlap Figueroa, you've got... Uh, or sorry, uh, Elvis Figueroa, and you've got um, Brock Forbes on the Crabs, who's a fantastic pitcher for them. Um, But obviously, with the season dominated by Pitching Machine, pitchers will be all the rage, and and Hiroto Wilcox and Finn James of the Tigers and Crabs are maybe the best two pitchers left, so it would be great to see them matching up in the finals. All right, thank you, Firewall, and thank you for the rest. F- thank you to the rest of the panelists. Blazeball fans, don't go away. When we return, we're going to go over what happened in Blazeball lore during season eight. So stay tuned, and we will be right back. This stream was brought to you by Take Me Out to the Blall Game. Hi. I'm Kimberly Dauber of Blaseball in the Sky with a Microphone. If you love Blaseball and you love podcasts, you should be listening to my podcast, Take Me Out to the Blall Game. Take Me Out to the Blall Game is your friendly neighborhood Blaseball podcast. I started it because there are always so many amazing things happening in the Blaseball community, and I want to talk to all the people doing them. On the show, you can learn about Blaseball Cares, participate in a memorial for Kiki Familia, hear about the origins of the Snacrifice, and more. If that sounds like fun, 
Check out our website by going to tinyurl.com slash baseballpod or subscribe to Take Me Out to the Blall Game on your favorite podcatcher. Once again, that's tinyurl.com slash baseballpod or Take Me Out to the Blall Game on your favorite podcatcher. Viewers, we are back live on the Baseball News Network Season 8 Recap Stream. Previously, we discussed what happened in sport this season. If you missed that, don't worry because we will be posting this stream on the Baseball News Network YouTube channel shortly after. Now, let's move on to lore. Let's get back to our panel. Hello, panelists. Right now, we're going to talk about what happened in Baseball lore this season. So far, we've got one question in the chat. Uh, Cosmic Lexicon would like us to talk about whether you can pet the dog in baseball. That is all sports fans wanted to know this season. Um, however, we are also, of course, welcome to talk about whatever else regarding lore that we would like. So it is now over to you. I think that a place to start dog kind of sets us up well to discuss one of the big storylines of course you can pet the dogs as long as the dogs owners and friends are okay with it because all dogs are good dogs and they all accept lovings and pets that um, was finally confirmed by the commissioner by the way i believe several days ago yes um but one specific dog or collection of six dogs six pack dog walker uh was in the headlines in the off season alongside uh, NAN and Jalen Hot Dog Fingers as players who are now listed as receivers. And uh, we don't know exactly what this means, except that they have permanent flickering and that they have the receiver tab and their pregame rituals have changed. And it said, hi, I'm, this is Wyatt, I have a plan. And that's all we know so far, but it seems to me that Wyatt Mason, now known as NAN in baseball terms, might have some sort of higher power connected to the microphone. And we might see that come into play against either the peanut or the hall monitor in coming seasons, depending on what they're able to tell us through these receivers. Uh, it's definitely very interesting to see Wyatt Mason uh, can, can, uh, communicating uh, with us in this way. Of course, we haven't actually heard anything from anything from or about Wyatt Mason, except for the microphone has said something about Wyatt Blaseball from time to time. And, you know, uh, umpire Chaff said to the tacos a while ago that they tried to kill Mason during the uh, during the Grand Unslam, but Mason's powers exceeded theirs. It's all they could say and that they feared the Mason. So I'm starting to think that Wyatt Mason, whatever they may be, has a, has a plan for how they can get back to the real world from wherever they are stuck or perhaps how we can fight back against these umpires that keep taking away our beloved players. But of course, that's not all. And one of the key storylines that developed was the development of the hall, as Ace mentioned earlier. And Ace, I'm curious if you have any thoughts on what we might see coming of the hall in the future and how you think that that's all going to develop, especially as it pertains to the hall monitor and the millions of eggs that he is getting fed. Well, I will say, and just to mention this in passing, there was a blue line that appeared under the 14th player in the hall just for a few minutes when the hall first opened up. And the default setting for the number of players on a baseball team is 14. So I'm not going to say anything explicitly, but you all get the picture. So that may be what we see. I mean, we could see some sort of team of resurrected players. I don't know. But... I mean, no matter what, there are a lot of peanuts pouring in for the most popular and especially some recently incinerated players in the hall. You know, we see Boyfriend Monreal at the top of the list, Randall Marijuana, you know, both very beloved members of their teams, Workman Gloom. 
And as you go down the list, there are so many familiar names, and it's it's just an interesting sight to behold. And I, I'm really curious as to what will come out of this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this is maybe the main thing to watch. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we here at the Eurosport counted the number of peanuts. Of course, is changing every second, but it was about 88 million, if I'm not mistaken. I hope my colleagues haven't done the math wrong. Uh, but I think you're right. I think that maybe um, paying tribute to these uh, incinerated players might have will surely have actually interesting implications in the future. And I'm curious whether our sports fans will start following that team if it does come back. What will happen to the others? Panelists, we have a request in the chat before we wrap up, which we're going to have to do in just a moment. Moist Talkers would like us to please talk about our squid friend. We love them. So... Do you have any further comment on the Hall monitor who appeared recently? I mean, I would say that um, personally, I was very partial to the shelled one at first because I really like peanuts. Um, but then I saw a bigger batter deity come along that could eat the peanut and kind of felt that it was wise to maybe you know, bend the knee to that deity instead. So I'm all about the hall monitor. It's been very helpful to the baseball community. It's opened the hall. It's protected the players in the hall. It's going to probably eat the shelled one, which is cool. And I mean, surely nothing can go wrong by giving a undead giant squid creature that can talk millions and millions of peanuts. Nothing could possibly go wrong. I think that nothing could possibly go wrong is an excellent statement on which to end any discussion of baseball strategy whatsoever. So thank you again, panelists, for discussing lore. Viewers, when we come back, we're going to get the panelists' predictions for Season 9, and then we will bring our first streamed season recap to a close. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this short break. This stream was brought to you by the Blaseball News Network. Blaseball News Network. The place for the best Blaseball News. Brought to you by the best Windows XP technologies. At Blaseball News on Twitter. In conjunction with our writing team. Here of their own free will on BlaseballNewsNetwork.com. The high energy reporting tiefling for Cynthia Helltiger. Our master of stats. Firewall Andrews, Sportscasting Supreme, and yours truly, the Sportscaster, and the intern in chief himself, Benson Nutty Newton. That's BlaseballNewsNetwork.com, BlaseballNewsNetwork.com, or at Blaseball News on Twitter. You cannot avoid it. You cannot resist. Blaseball News Network. Viewers, we are back. Thank you for sticking with us. You're watching the Blaseball News Network Season 8 Recap, hosted by Kimberly Dauber and featuring Benson Nutty Newton, Firewall Andrews, Ace Analyst, and Vlad. Our chat is moderated by the high-energy reporting tiefling for Scythia Helltiger. We've just gone over the sport and lore for Season 8, and finally, our panelists will be making their predictions for Season 9. So, panelists... Let's go around the non-existent table and tell me, what do you think is going to happen in Season 9? Let's start with Benson. Oh, oh, geez. In Season 9, I mean, it's going to be, if I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to be a little bit hard to predict. What with the election coming up pretty soon? I mean, there's some pretty impactful uh, things coming up, like, you know, improving pitchers by a star, improving batters by a star. But I'm going to be honest with you. Unless anything dramatic happens, I'm completely expecting the Baltimore Crabs to easily sail to finals next season and probably pick up a win. All right. Thank you, Benson. On to Firewall. What are your predictions for season nine? Uh, I mean, I'm a little shy now that I got my Sunbeams prediction wrong for season eight, but I'm going to be bold. I'm going to stand up and say what I think, 
and I think that the New York Millennials are going to make a comeback and that they are going to win next year. Oh, something might possibly be going wrong with the stream for someone? Maybe? Oh, I think we had a bit of a hiccup, but hopefully we'll come back. Let's see. Lots of shyness broke the stream. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to wait for the chat to tell us that we're back, and then we can uh, continue. We're back, Reddit? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I Sounds like we dropped off in the middle of Firewall's prediction. As, as Cosmic Lexicon says in the chat, I think I think I was a little too shy for, for my own good here. But um, I, I guess that my main prediction is, is that I think the New York Millennials, I, I have a good feeling about what they're going to do in the offseason. Uh, I think that they have some really good hitters. Of course, they had the first pitcher to throw a perfect game. I think it's just all going to come together for them, and I'm going to pick them to win in Season 9. All right. Thank you, Firewall. I think we should also note someone uh, for Scythia has announced in the chat that the Crabs have just clinched the Wild League Finals. So if that impacts your predictions for Season 9 in any way, please uh, revise them accordingly. I'd also just like to shout out Petroform, who said, Refresh in violence, which is what you should do if the stream goes down. Also, apparently the Pies have just shamed the Tigers, and the Houston Spies are now in party time. Thank you very much to the chat for sending, the, sending us these uh, very important updates. Um, let's finish up our predictions for season nine so that we can all get back to watching our thrilling uh, finals of the baseball season. Watch the championship game. Uh, Ace Analyst, what are your predictions for season nine? Well, first of all, I mean, Benson and Firewall, you have some some great picks right there. I was going to shout out both of those teams. Obviously, the Crabs are hard to beat. And the Millennials had some really big hot streaks this year, as uh, Millennials beat writer Rhett Faluler will tell you. They went 12-1, and one, I believe, during one stretch. So they're definitely a strong pick to make the playoffs next year. I'd also like to to say that, you know, look out for those uh, enhanced party time teams. You know, we saw teams like the Sunbeams and the Spy and the Flowers really bounce back this season. And so I think we might see that again with teams like the Lovers or the Moist Talkers or the Breath Mints again in Season 9. So those are some of the teams that I predict could could move on. But again, like like Firewall said, I don't want to – don't lock me in. Those are not official. Those are just some thoughts. All right. Thank you, Ace Analyst. And finally, let's go over to Vlad. Vlad, what are your predictions for next season? Well, I'd like to mirror what my colleague said. Of course, the well, barring something extraordinary happening, the Crabs are going to stay in contention. I'm actually going to predict that they win the finals, regardless of the team, probably the Pies, regardless of the team that they're going to meet. Um, so I'm sticking with my original prediction that there will be three um, ascension-prone teams next season. But I really, I really like the thought that uh, other wild high teams are bouncing back this season. Uh, I do like how the millennials look, so I think they'll be in contention, especially if they win some good blessings. But uh, from where we're standing, I know it's a cliche. I think it's the crabs to lose at this point. All right. Thank you very much, Vlad. Viewers, we are all out of time for today. You've been watching the Blaseball News Network's Season 8 recap stream. Before we go, panelists, real quick, where can our viewers find you? Benson. Uh, you can find me, Benson, at, uh, at, at BNN Intern on, on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can find my boss, the Blaseball News Network, at Blaseball News. You can uh, see my writing in the writing of all of my incredible compatriots, including Firewall, on uh, our website. We actually have two domain now, domains now. There's BlazeballNewsNetwork.com, and there is the much shorter and easier Blazeball.news. All right. Thank you, Benson. Firewall, where can we find you? Uh, as Nutty mentions, you can find me on Blazeball News Network, um, but, but I have my own uh, Twitter account, Firewall Andrews, and I also manage the Flangraphs account, which is Flangraphs Blaze on Twitter. And you can find me hanging out on the 
Shoe Thieves Discord and the BNN Discord. All right. Thanks, Firewall. Ace Analyst, where are you? Well, you can find me over on the Blaseball Prospectus Twitter, at Blaseball Pro. We have the amazing Lucky Haskins, who writes alongside me, and he does a really amazing job. Uh, and that's about it, because my bosses won't let me have a personal account, which is very disappointing. All right, thank you. And finally, Vlad. Uh, you can find me personally in any dark uh, castle during the night in Europe. But you can find my colleagues and myself from Euro- Eurosport at Twitter Eurosport. Uh, no other accounts for me. Just like to give a big shout out to everybody doing a great job in the community. All right. Thank you all very much. That's all the time we have for today. You can also find our chat moderator for Scythia Helltiger on BlazeballNewsNetwork.com and on Twitter at FHelltiger. Listeners, my name is Kimberly Dauber. You can find my podcast, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, at tinyurl.com slash BlazeballPod. And you can find me on Twitter at BlazeballPod. This concludes our show for today. If you missed any of it, we will be posting it on YouTube very soon. And if you'd like to keep chatting, we will be hanging out on the Baseball News Network Discord server after the show. Thank you all for watching, and we are all of baseball. <laughs>